Hello everyone. Every year or so, a fun fact or news item about KitKats does the round of the internet. The fact is that when a KitKat fails quality control in the factory, it's not thrown out. Instead, it is mashed up and used to make the chocolate filling between the wafers in the next batch of KitKats. Meaning KitKats are made from recycled KitKats. As the news items say, no KitKat goes uneaten. And it's not just KitKats that do this. Many other confectionaries like other chocolates, caramel, cookies, soft drink, you name it, all do this recycling. After all, wasted sweets are wasted money. When these news items go round and pop up on sites like Reddit, it's usually not too long before someone asks the interesting question. If this Kit Kat is made from recycled Kit Kats, and those Kit Kats were made from recycled Kit Kats, could this Kit Kat contain some of the very first batch of Kit Kats? Well, let's find out. The amount of recycling is unknown and is going to vary from item to item. But for example, let's assume that 10% of Kit Kats fail quality control and are recycled. So on day two, you have 10% of your original batch left. Let's assume it's mixed thoroughly, and again, 10% of those Kit Kats fail quality control and are recycled. So now you've got 10% of the original 10%, and each day you retain only 10% of the original batch, so you divide the amount of original batch remaining by 10. At the end of the working week, you'll only have 0.001% of your original batch left. Now, you can't go on doing this indefinitely. Because everything is made of atoms and molecules, nothing can be diluted infinitely. Eventually, the last molecule remaining from your original batch of Kit Kats will go out the door as a good Kit Kat. But atoms and molecules are tiny and a single chocolate bar will contain trillions of trillions of trillions of molecules. So how long will it be before the last molecule from an entire vat of Kit Kats disappears? To answer that, we need to know how many molecules are in this Kit Kat. Chocolate is a very complex mixture of lots of different chemicals that give it its taste and texture, so it's very difficult to work out how many molecules are in this bar. But the nutrition information says that a Kit Kat is 50% sugar. So I'm going to use the molecular weight of pure sugar to get an estimate for how many molecules are in this bar. Using this, I found that one of these Kit Kat bars contains one times 10 to the 23 molecules. That's a one with 23 zeros after it. That's a huge number, but then you take 10% of it and 10% of it again each day. After 24 days, you would need to eat 10 of these to have a 50-50 chance of eating just one molecule from the original batch of Kit Kats. Now that doesn't sound too bad, but you're dividing by 10 each day, so each day you need 10 times more Kit Kat. At the end of the first month, you would need 10 million Kit Kats to stand a chance of having just one molecule of the original batch. After 45 days, you would need a mass of Kit Kats equal to the weight of all the water in all the world's oceans. And only four days later, the amount of Kit Kats needed to have just one molecule of the original would weigh as much as the entire Earth. So the fact that Kit Kats are made of molecules, and molecules are discrete units and can't be diluted indefinitely, means that the chances of this containing any of the original batch are inconceivably tiny. But there's a good chance it might contain a little bit of Kit Kat made two or three weeks earlier. I'm going to enjoy it just the same. Two Kit Kat fingers is the perfect portion, so share with a friend or have some now and later. Yeah, what are the chances of that?